All right, what you're going to see now is how to do a dihybrid cross. It's a little bit more difficult, <clears throat> excuse me, than a single hybrid cross, but it's, it's pretty much done the same way. So this is question number one on genetics worksheet number three. And the first thing you want to do is write down your traits. <clears throat> for this one, it says that long nails is dominant to short nails. So for long nails, we use a big N, and for short nails, we use a little N. And then it says six fingers is dominant to five fingers. So since six fingers is dominant, we use a big S. And since five fingers is recessive, we use a little s. Now, the first thing you need to do is come up with the genes of the parents. If you don't get the genes of the parents, you can't even start the problem. So when you read it, it says you have, or what would the phenotype ratio of a cross between a male heterozygous for both traits? Now, heterozygous means one of each. So he's got to be heterozygous for nails which would be big N, little n, and he's heterozygous for fingers. So he's going to be big S, little s. Now those are the genes for the father, right? Those are the genes for the male. And then it says he's crossed with a female, which is heterozygous for nails, but has five fingers. Well, the female is heterozygous for nails, so again, she's going to be big N, little n, one of each, but she's only got five fingers. Now, to have five fingers, you can't have a big S because that's dominant, and that would give her six fingers. So to have five fingers, the only thing she can have is two little S's. So she's got to be little s, little s. So now you've got the genes of the parents, and you can actually start doing this problem. If you don't get the genes right, your problem's going to be wrong. All right, so what you do in these branching things with two crosses is you take the first trait for each parent. You take the trait for nails and you do a simple Punnett square. <clears throat> so the father, you have a big N and a little n. The mother, you have a big N and a little n. And when you do this cross, you're going to get big N, big N. You just intersect the letters. Big N, little n. Big N, little n. And a little n, little n. Now the ratio for that is 1 big N, big N, two, big N, little N, and one, little N, little N. So you get a one to one ratio. So once you get that ratio, write it down and give yourself some space. One, big N, big N, two, big N, little N, and one, little N, little N. And note, you don't have different letters on a Punnett square. You have N's crossed with N's. You're crossing the trait for nails with the father and the mother. You don't combine N's and S's. It's just N's and N's. If you see a pun square and you've got two different letters on it, then you should know right away that you're doing it wrong. All right, so you're crossing the first trait and you get a ratio of one, two, one. Now you want to look at the cross of the second trait, which is for fingers, six fingers versus five fingers. And you can do the same thing. You make a Punnett square. And you take the father's genes for fingers, which is a big S, little s. And then you take the mother's genes for fingers, and she's a little s, little s. And you do your cross. You intersect them. You get a big S and a little s, a little s and a little s, a big S and a little s, and a little s and a little s. And that's no BS. So anyway. You've got your Punnett square, look at your ratio. You've got two big S, little s, and two little s, little s. So your ratio on this one for the trait of nails between the father and the mother is two to two. And again, notice that you don't have two different letters in here. You've only got S's because you're only working with the cross for the trait for fingers. Don't ever have more than one type of letter in there. So what you do is you take this second ratio, your two big S, little s, and two little s, little s, and you branch it off each of the components of your first ratio, the ratio for nails. So you have two big S, little s, two little s, little s, two big S, little s, two little s, little s, two big S, little s, and two little s, little s. So again, you took the first trait 
you did a cross, and you came up with the ratio. Then you took the second trade. You did a cross, and you came up with the ratio, and you branched it off the first set. And if you had a third one, you would do the cross, come up with the ratio, and branch it off the second one. But we're not doing a trihybrid cross. We're just doing a dihybrid. So now you just multiply these out like this. Follow the little trail. 1 times 2 is 2. And then tack the letters together. Big N, big N. Big S, little s. 1 times 2 is 2. Big N, big N. Little s, little s. 2 times 2 is 4. Big N, little n. Big S, little s. Multiply the numbers. Tack the letters together. 2 times 2 is 4. Big N, little n. Little s, little s. And then finally, 1 times 2 is 2. Little n, little n. Big S, little s. And 1 times 2 is 2. Little n, little n. Little s, little s. So what you get here is your genotype ratio in a nice, neat little package. You don't have a gigantic Punnett square that you have to count each little square and figure out what they have. It already gives you your genotype ratio in a nice package, which saves you a lot of time. So if you look at the questions, it says, A, how many of the long-nailed offspring have at least one homozygous trait? Well, it's asking you about long-nailed offspring. These are long nails because they have a big N. These are long nails because they have a big N. So are these, and so are these. So you know that these are the ones with long nails. And it says, how many have at least one homozygous trait? Well, this is a homozygous trait, so you've got two of them. This is a homozygous trait, so you've got two more of them. These are both heterozygous traits, one of each, so they don't count. And these, here's a homozygous trait, little s, little s, so that's four more. So you've got a total of eight. So you would have eight offspring that have long nails and at least one homozygous trait. B says, how many of the five-fingered offspring are homozygous for this trait? Well, to have five fingers, you basically have to be homozygous for that trait because if you were heterozygous, which means you had a big S, you would have six fingers. So to be five-fingered, you have to have little s, little s. And you can see, well, there's two of them have five fingers. Four more have five fingers, that's six. And two more have five fingers, so again, that's eight of them. Remember, this tells you how many babies would have that trait. So you have two babies, four more babies, and two more babies. That's eight babies. Eight offspring would have five fingers and homozygous for five fingers. And then C says, how many offspring are heterozygous for at least one trait? Well, these are heterozygous because you have a big S, little s, so that's two of them. None of these are heterozygous. You have little s, little s, big N, big N, so those are both homozygous. So you've got two. These are heterozygous. So you've got four more. That's six. Here's a heterozygous trait. So you've got four more. That's 10. And these are heterozygous. So you've got two more. That's 12. And both of these are homozygous, so they don't fit. So you would have 12 offspring that have at least one heterozygous trait. And that's how you do question number one on genetics problem three. This is how you do the branching method. If you haven't figured it out, watch it again.